Yo, what is up guys? Joker here bringing you another video for Once Human. So I know it's been a while. The Path of Exile still League is still going strong. I'm still putting an insane amount of time and effort into that. My main channel did just hit 1300 subs. So yay, I'm super happy of that. Uh, but I've been going super ham on that. And I've been keeping up with things like Once Human and Power. The Pal World, the first descendant, trying to see if they have any updates that like catch my interest of things that are really important to update. And once Human actually dropped a relatively huge patch note for 1.1 that I am extremely hype and extremely happy about. They go over a lot of features that I was saying in my previous video. I think that they should add. So let's go over it. I'm not going to go over the whole thing because it's pretty long. I'm going to go over like key points and like TLDR it, right? But up first, we have new animal ranching feature, the ability to capture and raise animals, right? So that's one of the things that I was saying previously would be a huge benefit, kind of that Pokemon gotta catch them all feature, like I was mentioning with the deviants, right? Adding more deviants, adding more tameable or catchable animals, because people like that type of system in survival games. I know there may be some people that don't, but I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people like when they can go ahead and interact with the wildlife, right? Like if I can breed an army of wolves to defend my base, I'm sorry, that's just cool, okay? You, like, uh, and uh, on top of that, they uh, have the cute aspect as well, right? Like the non-combat oriented aspect where they have the rabbits, the sheep, the deer, right? The, the cute aspect of it where you can have more of those just nice to look at pets or it could be fucking combat rabbits. I don't know. They could have little knives and shank people in their sleep. Well, that's super cool. Uh, this is one of the things that I wanted them to add is another like gotta catch them all feature. I really like those in survival games. So I'm happy they chose to do this. Plus, it goes ahead and it helps you automate your resource gathering a lot more without giving you like a direct automation system, right? It makes you actually do something for it. It gives you the got to catch them all plus extra resources. And it says that uh, in the September update, there's going to be rare and unique critters. So essentially like I'm, I'm going to reference that as shinies, right? Everybody loves shinies. That's why shiny hunting is always such a big thing in creature collecting. It's a big thing in Pal World. It's a big thing in Pokemon. Anytime you can get a unique or special pet, people do go out of their way to obtain that. It's kind of like a trophy, right? It's showing that I put in a lot of effort and I got something cool out of it. So huge fan of this first update. And this is one of the main things that I wanted to make the video on because this just looks cool as fuck. Um, the only thing is this is relatively huge. So they're going to have to expand our territory and or I guess this would be an eternal land. I don't know where we'd actually be able to put a space this big, but um, we would have to go ahead and uh, figure out where we can place this. But super, super cool. Uh, up next, we have the revamped fishing system. As someone who didn't do very much fish th uh, fishing, Personally, I only did enough fishing to get the electric ill deviant, which only took me like 30 attempts or something. So it didn't take me very long at all. And fishing wasn't really fun. So, and it wasn't really intuitive on what you were supposed to really be doing. So I kind of just literally held the mouse button and hoped that was, it was what I was supposed to do. Um, but they went ahead and they revamped it. They revamped the controls. They are saying that they made it significantly better. So I'm going to have to test this out when uh, the new season drops, see how much more enjoyable it is than previously, since I did do a little bit of it previously. But they added a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, not a lot. They added the same 
thing that I was mentioning, a gotta catch them all feature, right? They added more types of fish and they added a way for you to showcase these. So I don't remember the wall trophies being a thing, but they also added a bigger fish tank, right? So now you're able to go ahead and show off your fish as well, be it the wall trophies or the living fish tank, which both would be really cool features. Once again, going back to that gotta catch them all aspect where uh, I, I can't really understate the amount of people that actually do take the extra time to get rare and unique pets and fish and stuff like this. Like there's a large amount of people People that pet hunt. I can see people going ahead and using the additional time to capture all of these animals, to get the rare, unique uh, animals, to go ahead and get all of the fish. I can see people doing this. And since there wasn't a ton to do anyways, since we were time gated, once you hit level 50, pretty much all you did was grind out blueprints, right? That's like it. That that's all you really had to do. But now they added two additional gotta catch them all systems on top of the deviant system. So now you have three gotta catch them all systems in the game that you can use to help fill the time between the weekly releases and the weekly unlocks, right? They also did add a new PvP game mode, which... I'm a big fan of, right? I'm a big fan of the jellyfish minivan event that we currently have, where it allows you to experience PVP, allows you to test out your build. I'm a fan of that because I play on a PVE server. So the fact that I'm able to go ahead and play around with PVP when I want to, I think that's a really good concept. And them adding more, more world events is always just going to be a positive, right? It makes the world feel more alive and more active. It gives you more things to actually do. So I am a big fan of them adding more world events as well as more PVP world events because every once in a while, I feel like people do like to engage in PVP. Let's say you just finish farming out an OP build and you want to see how it would do in a PVP situation, right? You want to, you know, stomp the noobs, right? Everyone likes that feeling of being overpowered and pvp events help you do that so up next we have the ancient ones trial which looks like a new end game raid which is really cool because that's one of the things that they were lacking there wasn't a ton of end game content right pretty much all we were doing is re-beating the silos and re-beating the bosses just at a slightly higher tier uh it wasn't really a lot this has it phrased more like it is some kind of raid where it is a much higher level challenge so this seems like it's going to be really cool i may be misinterpreting this but that's what it seems like is an additional end game challenge which we did need more of there wasn't there wasn't a super ton of in-game challenges, right? So really cool update there. They went ahead and added a mod conversion feature. I don't fully understand this. I'd have to jump into game and play around with it to really see what's going on here. Um, but all in all, it looks like and it looks like a player buff for legendary um for the legendary mods. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is like just a plus. Oh God, where did it go? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's just a plus. Uh, like I said, I'd have to jump in game and play around with it. And I'm not really planning on jumping back in until the new season starts in September. But uh, I I'm going to go ahead and just assume that this is a buff. Then we have controller support, which is really dope. Um, this adds a lot more diversity to the people that can play uh, because it allows you to play with PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers, all of those, which a lot of people do like playing shooter games with controllers over uh, a keyboard and mouse. So this is really good for that. It's going to add that diversity of if you want to play 
play with a controller, you now can. So that's really cool there. Uh, I personally don't care, but I know a lot of people do prefer to play shooters with a controller as opposed to a keyboard and mouse. Cross character sharing for paid content. This is huge, right? So this means that you only have to buy MTX once and you're going to be able to use it on multiple characters on multiple servers. I love when games don't make you buy the same thing multiple times. Like I don't, I hate having to buy the same outfit 17 times if I have 17 different characters on 17 different worlds if I'm really enjoying a game, right? This goes ahead and gets rid of that. It allows me to use the MTX that I buy and mix match it among my characters, which I really enjoy. They did also add server invitations, which is really cool. One of the main complaints is people not being able to play with their friends. So what this does is it will have you, um, it, it will give you a invitation code that you can give to your friends. If your server is showing full, you can give them this code and they'll still be able to join you. However, there is still a hard cap on amount of people that can join a server, which makes sense because there is a finite amount of resources, right? So there can't be an infinite number of players because there's only so much space and so much resources on every server. So this makes sense, but it also does help address the fact that people were upset they weren't able to play with their friends, right? So really, really good update there. And then they have a whole breakdown of seasons, how it works, what's going to happen and all of that. As you can see, this is quite a lot. So I'm not going to be going over it in this video. I may make a separate video, but I believe they do uh, they do do a really good job of breaking it down, especially if you're not a seasonal player. Like if you don't normally play seasonal games, I feel like they do a really good job of breaking it down of like what happens, how this works, what's kept, stuff like that. They break it down to a really uh, base level for everyone. That way it's kind of easy for you to understand of what am I going to be carrying over going into season one? I guess it'd be season one or would it be season two? I think it'd be season two, maybe. I, I think it'd be season two, right? Because this was the first season. So then we have something that I was hesitant about when I first saw it, right? Um, anytime that I see new shop arrivals on any game post, I get worried. My heart sinks a little bit and I am extremely concerned because... Games can live or die by their microtransaction practices, right? We know that from many, many games where a bad microtransaction system can kill a game even if it is a good game. This is perfect. I was so happy and I was so relieved when I saw this because all it is is more skins, right? It's skins and cosmetics which I'm so happy that they're staying true to not adding any pay to win aspects to it, because that is one thing that I feel can kill once human is if they add pay to win to the gas shop. Um, I feel like that is one of the things that will kill once human if there is a pay to win aspect because it is time gated. So if you can just use money to bypass a time gate, that's going to turn away a large amount of players. So I'm happy that it's just pure cosmetics and MTX. It's what Path of Exile does, right? And I love Path of Exile where they only sell cosmetics and the game does really well because of it. It's a free to play game and they only sell cosmetics. That's the way that I feel majority of games should do it. You should get majority of your money from people wanting to support you because you have a really good game and you sell them skins. That's the only reason that I buy skins and Path of Exile, right, is because I want to support the devs. It's a free to play game. And I know that dev time is not free. So I recommend 
uh, buying skins in one's human. If you are able, right? Let me emphasize that. If you do have the disposable income and you enjoy one's human, I do highly recommend you financially supporting them by buying MTX, by buying skins, because a lot of time and effort does go into game development. It is not free. It does take a lot of money and when dev teams actually do pump out good games and they are res uh, receptive of feedback from the community, they work with the community, they deserve to be rewarded for their effort. They need to be able to continue to do it because if they don't get enough money, then they're either going to have to use predatory microtransaction or um, or start like adding a paywall to the game itself, right? Or just shut down development on the game. Those are like the three options. And we don't want any of those, especially from good receptive game dev studios. So support them if you can is essentially what I'm trying to say. Hashtag not sponsored, right? Uh, but yeah really cool and a lot of the mtx does look really cool like obviously the bear suits look a little funny but like a lot of the mtx does actually look pretty good uh and then they have another event which is something that i appreciate once again it goes back to the open world feeling more alive the more events that you have in game the more it's going to feel like a living world because there's going to be more people going around doing these events and especially in an open world game like once human you're going to be able to interact with players significantly more than you would previously it just adds that life to the game right so world events are always fucking dope in my opinion so overall this is like one of the best uh update patch notes that i could have seen them put out anytime recently it gives me a lot more hope it shows me that they're still being incredibly receptive to feedback and what the player base seems like they want they're going ahead and addressing it as soon as they are able so good job once human but yeah that's pretty much it uh don't forget to like comment and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content more videos on this channel will be coming most likely uh early september when this season drops uh i'm probably going to be done with the poe season about then but yeah until next time take care